Hello everybody, Autistic Genius here. Well, thank you so much for an amazing few weeks on the page. Your so is going amazingly well. More t-shirts have been sold. Buy some more. Click the link. Click the link on the page or I'll put a link here. Anyway, quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, extra treat for you this week. I've decided to do an extra video. But uh, this is the kind of video that I've not done in a long time, of course. It's the end of the Wavelength series, number 14. So this today, we're going to discuss Katie Hopkins. Now, Katie Hopkins, as you all know, is a very, well, it's just, it's, she's a lady. And she likes to say things that upset people. I don't, think she says, I don't know if she doesn't intend to upset people. Or I certainly, definitely believe she does it to get a reaction. And that's why she's got so much media attention. The Katie Hopkins autism saga began with the general election when she decided to say something about Ed Miliband. Now, Ed Miliband, from my perspective, is actually quite a nice guy. He's probably one of the most genuine politicians in such a high-profile way that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Katie Hopkins watched the, the, the debate where they're all there and the natter about what they're going to do and how they're going to change the world. And Katie Hopkins said, Ed, stop looking at us. You are weird. Look at people, not a machine. Try and act off the spectrum. I can understand the upsetting people. The truth is, that comment doesn't offend me. The, the thing, I think the thing that annoys me about it is that she says try and act off the spectrum, which is, which is derogatory to everyone who's autistic, because people who are, who are autistic may not know what autistic, acting like autistic is, because it's just, they do it. Portraying something that they may be unaware of that they're doing in a negative way is going to make them so self-conscious and make them think that everything they do is an issue. It's making autism and spinning it and making it negative, which I hate. I'm all about positivity. Positive, positive, positive. Then, of course, this led to Stephen Hawking's daughter, Lucy, who wrote a letter to stop her from making laughing stock of people with disabilities. Now, we'd sometimes like to say autism is a disability, but it, it, in this country, we kind of regard it as one due to, in regards to the law and support and things. And the reason why we say autism is a disability, because let's be honest, when it's at the really severe end of the spectrum, it is, it is quite just like, well, Where was I? The reason why we say autism and disability in this, in this country, I guess, is because when you're at the survival, more severe end of the spectrum, it is disabling, and it does, and it can limit your life. <sighs> I've unplugged the bugger. Well, autism is regarded as a disability because when you look at the far end of the spectrum, it is, it can be quite, it's very challenging to live with and to support with. So people do need that bit of extra funding and support to help them get through it and deal with it. So, for Katie Hopkins to say things like this, it is kind of belittling um, all the great work that goes on with autism and all the great support that these people get. After this, Kevin Healy, a really cool guy, got the board director of the National Autistic Society, and he's a friend on Facebook. He, has start, he started a petition, and he re replied to Katie Hopkins' silly comments by saying, people with autism face challenges every single day of their lives. They don't need this from Ke they don't need this. Katie Hopkins has hit a new low. Absolutely, she's hit a completely new low. When she talks about fat people and this mentally ill, whatever, it's disgusting every time. It's disgusting. But when she starts purposely picking out a real specific thing, that is incredibly discriminatory. Like she did with fat people, so discriminatory. It's awful, awful, awful. And then Kevin Hopkins also says she has no respect. She's got no compassion. She's gone way too far this time with this. Then a really good TV show came out on Channel 4 called Born Naughty, which I absolutely rate. It looks at children's behaviour instead of going, what can we do to stop it? It says, why does it happen? Why, why, why? They look at why it happens and they deal with it, either with a diagnosis and the support that way, or they just maybe they just need extra help in these areas because the parents are unsure what to do. Incredible show. Love it, love it, love it. Rate it, watch it. The first two episodes, brilliant. She then decided to move on to the two children in episode one, which was Theo and Honey. Essentially, what happens in the show, there are two children and two families. Doctors, the two doctors, the GP, I can't remember the name, was it Dr. Hart? I can't remember the name, but Rav and Ravi, whatever their names are, they look at some footage, examine their behaviour, look at what they might see, and then from there, they get specialists in to talk to them, do some therapy sessions, and then from there, they work out and form some form of diagnosis or something or things that they can put in place to support them so their behaviour can improve and to help the parents. That's what's important, is to help the parents as well as the child, that's what we need to remember. The little boy, Nick, called Theo, who's, I thought was quite such a nice, he was such a nice little boy, he was really kind, you could see that he really loved everyone, he got on with everyone, but he just had issues behaving, because he's just, I don't know whether he was, 
I don't know whether he felt like he was getting mixed signals or he was struggling to function because it was a very busy house because it was quite a busy house. He, Theo, left the, ran, flooded the bathroom, jumped out the window naked and stood on the roof. Katie Hopkins replied with this wonderful thing saying, Theo flooded the bathroom, climbed out the window and stood naked on a roof and still no one thought to push him off. No one would think to push a child off a roof, Katie. That, to be fair, is just silly, snivelling, immature comments that I expect on a school playground. And if I did hear on a school playground, the child who said that thing would have been spoken to and dealt with in the correct way and made sure they fully understood that these kind of comments are not nice. That's what would happen. In the end, Theo turned out that there was no need for a diagnosis, just that there were techniques that they told the mum about and the parents about to create a brand new system. So it was a consistent form of discipline. So he was able to, so he had, so he knew where he stood miscommunication on, from different members of the family because it was a large ha household where lots of people lived in. So in the end they worked out a system and he was fine. Fantastic. Great. Good news. Good story. Lovely. Then, Honey, a nine year old girl who I thought was just lovely. I thought she was so nice. I just, she was so cute. She knew that she had issues. That was the, that was the most devastating, the most bit that upset me was that when you spoke to her, she could tell you there was issues and she wasn't, and she didn't understand them and she said that. A nine-year-old child to say that is, is really cool, really mature, but it's also quite sad when a child can identify that there's something not 100%. From my perspective, watching Honey initially's behaviour, I knew there was more severe issues than there was with Theo. So maybe we're going to get some compassion from Katie Hopkins. Of course not. You've all read the stories. I have six tweets from Katie Hopkins. These were not the only tweets. There's probably about more than ten, but I only went for six because I couldn't stand reading any more because they actually upset me when I read them. First tweet that I have, nine-year-old honey is super sweet. Okay. Well, at least the teeth are. Four chins for honey and six each for mum and dad. In the shadow of every fat parent is a fat child. Ladies and jelly beans, I give you honey. That's completely unfair. Completely unfair. They had, the family had three children and only honey seemed to be overweight. I know it sounds harsh, but she seemed to be the only one that was. So actually, that's... A flawed argument. Honey is completing a story about three little pigs. She identifies strongly with this animal. That's disgusting. That is that would that would that would if I heard that in the street about another, someone coming about another child, I'd be holding in not to go over and approach them. That's no. We are looking at a little girl. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there. That girl isn't little. No, you're right. She's nine. She's a big girl now. Honey's mum is thrilled her daughter has pathological demand avoidance. Her mum's not thrilled she has pathological demand avoidance. She's thrilled because she felt that it was her fault all these years and was struggling and struggling and struggling because she felt she was doing something wrong when really there were issues that no one could, you know, that, that, that she was born with that needed to be, that were finally made aware to her. And that's why she was so thrilled. It was relief. Now the whole world of funding has appeared, has opened up to her. That's not why she's thrilled. Too right, this girl needs funding. Any girl that has been permanently excluded from school and the, and the fact that she's identified she's on the autistic spectrum and has pathological demand avoidance, which is to be fair, only a, only a diagnosis that's only about 30 years old. It's too right, she gets funding. This is the one that went mental that big people were like disgusted by the most. Honey can't complete the autism assessment as she's too busy being a complete twat. But the shit mum assessment is complete. What would you do, Katie? What would you do? What would you do? That saddens me to read that out. It makes me feel awful. I just feel so... I feel wrong reading these things out, but I feel like I have to, as I'm an advocate, as I feel like I want to be an advocate for autism, so I feel like these things should be... I should be presenting my opinion on these things and trying to share with the world that this is wrong and we need to make it right. This has to disappear completely. This is the one that actually annoyed me the most. The, the honey stuff was upsetting and very wrong and disgusting behaviour. But that kind of thing to me is what I tend to try and ignore. Um, I try to ignore these things so that eventually it'll go away. Which I think is why she carried on. Because that silly thing about Ed Miliband. She's like, oh, that got me some media. Oh, look. Honey got me some media. And now, to be fair, I'm being a hypocrite because I'm giving her some media time. by discussing her. But anyway. Katie Hopkins. This is a story from The Independent that I just found out about. And it's titled, Katie Hopkins, I'm definitely on the spectrum. Katie Hopkins thinks she's autistic. <sighs> At this point, Kevin Healy's petition had reached 11,000 signatures, including mine. 
but still no apology. He appealed to get an apology, didn't get one. She was invited to the National Autistic Society to apologise to some of their members. She refused. There was a fake apology on Facebook as well by an imposter. Who would want to be Katie Hopkins? I really don't know. She then appeared, well appeared, she then was on the radio. And she said on the radio that ADHD was overdiagnosed and it just excuses bad parenting. Um, no, it doesn't excuse bad parenting. If a child has been diagnosed with ADHD, that means that a parent or some or a guardian has gone to the doctors expressing concerns about the child because they're worried about their behaviour and then pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed for a diagnosis. It takes two years up to, or more to, of real nagging and real pushing and fighting to get a diagnosis, Katie Hopkins. That does not excuse bad parenting. That, to me, as a parent who's fought her way to a diagnosis, and that's fantastic parenting. Well done to a penny parent who's fought through and got a diagnosis. You deserve a medal. In fact, five medals, just because. Why not? In the end, what happened was, on this interview, she was discussing about these things and her point of view and all this, saying the things that she normally does say. Blah, horrible things. Blah. A father called Jason phoned in and said that in the Big Brother house, she displayed autistic characteristics. That's a very fair point. I mean, I didn't watch the um, Big Brother because I just don't like it, but if she did express autistic characteristics, then fair enough. Which is interesting because she's saying all these things negative about children on the spectrum and ADHD, and the man's just gone, actually, you're displaying some traits here. Maybe you should, you know, think about what you're saying. She replied with instantly, I am probably on the spectrum. I did an interview with a journalist the other day and said, look, I'm definitely on the spectrum. This to me, I mean, I'm not going to justify it. What I will say is that I don't agree with what she said, but if she is, gets an official diagnosis of autism, I will eat my words and I will apologise to Katie Hopkins to her face for saying what I'm about to say. This is an attention-seeking behaviour, in my opinion. She did this when she pretended to do that fat thing where she said, I'm going to put on loads of weight and then I'm going to get rid of it really quickly. That, I felt, was attention-seeking because the way she behaved on this morning, going like, oh, I'm exhausted, oh, I can't cope, oh. And I think she's... I don't know why she's saying it. I just don't get it. I think it's just wrong. And I hate this kind of negative... It's just... It's just making it more about her. And it's not... It's not about her, it's about the horrible things she said that's upset other people. It's not about her, it's about the people she's upset. That's what the story focused, she's to be focused on, not her. And then the mother then phoned and talked in about her son, who was diagnosed with ADHD. She said to Katie Hopkins that some days are very, very challenging, but they are just normal children and want to be part of normal life. And to say this is just unfair, absolutely right. If you say these things, you are alienating people that already automatically feel alienated to judge and they have an increased paranoia because they're so self-conscious and cannot read on non-verbal communication and don't get the unwritten social rules. So they're going to feel a form of paranoia, anxiety towards these things and it builds and builds and builds. You saying these things are going to alienate them, make them feel even more alienated. Wrong, 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 wrong. it's disgusting. We need to be accepting of everyone. This is very negative behaviour. Hopkins then it replied, it takes a lot of courage to come out here and tell me I'm wrong. No, well, yeah, fair play to her for doing it, but everyone's thinking it. It's easy for me to point the finger. It is too easy for you to point the finger. But the thing is, though, a lot of things you've said in the past, Mrs Hopkins, have actually got you nowhere, and there's no physical, and there's no justification behind it. It just sounds like you're just saying it for an ego boost or an attention or media coverage. It's vile, and to be fair, you're getting it right now. She then admitted that she had softened to the emotional recollections of some of the parents' callers. Positive end. She actually maybe starts to see the error in her ways. I hope that explains the Katie Hopkins saga. It's a very long-winded whole... Um, <laughs> ...of stuff. A lot of it, I'm, I admit I'm very opinionated, um, but I think I feel like I should be talking about these things as an... As an advocate for as well, 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 I, well, I feel like I'm an autism advocate because I do videos and I have a page that's doing wellish, and I have a, I have my own I have it has its own T-shirts, so I feel like I'm some sort of advocate, and I feel like I should be sat talking about these things. Comment on this video. I'd love to hear what you think about all the whole madness of this r ridiculous stories, but I think it's important that we share this story and really find a way to allow acceptance in for us and for all people with disabilities and all people of different. Uh, religions, race, I think the whole point of acceptance is, I think for people with autism to sit here and say 
we want acceptance, we need to be accepting of others. Now, Katie Hopkins has said some pretty horrendous things, but if she stood up and said, I'm sorry, I am more than happy to accept her and I'll give up time for her. But if she's going to keep saying these silly things for the sake of saying them, which is what it comes across to as me whenever I watch her on telly, then why should I accept her because she's not accepting me? She needs to stand up and apologise to the autism community and to all the community she's upset because then we can accept her and she can accept us. And it's, it's, although it's one person, it's still a positive thing to happen because it, you know, it will be reflected in the media and all sorts. It's positivity. And that's all we're asking for. It's just to go on telly and say I'm sorry. It's not hard. Thank you so much for watching. This has been another wavelength, the saga of Katie Hopkins. Thank you so much and bye!